Thanks for coming to watch the third ulnar lesson. In this video, we have a look at percentages and how to apply them to various word questions. And we also look at scales on maps. There are lots of different skills and questions presented on our YouTube channel, which will assist you with your ulnar. And it would greatly assist us too if you subscribe to our channel. Thanks very much and we hope you get great benefit from what's coming up. Now might be a good time to pause so you can have a go at these percentage calculations and see if you can work through them without a calculator. In this table we're not going to have a look at calculations. What we'll have a look at is some simple solutions for basic percentages. Now 100% of 6250 is the whole thing, 6250. But 10% 10 is 10 one hundredths. Another way to say that is we can divide the amount by 10. So 10% 10 of 6,250 is just 625. We've crossed off that last zero by dividing by 10. To go a step further, 1% means dividing by 100. So 6,250 divided by 100 becomes 62.5. To go another step further, 0.1% is dividing the last amount by 10 again or dividing the original amount by 1000. Either way, we get a solution of 6.25. Now that means that if we can do that quickly for 10%, 1% or 0.1%, we can work out any amount without our calculator by adding up the various parts. So 21.1% can be calculated as follows. First of all, let's work out 20%. That's just double 10%. In other words, two lots of 625. Then we've got one, and 0.1% to make up 21.1%. So we'll add 62.5 and 6.25. Now that might require a little bit of adding up, but then we get to our final solution for 21.1% of 6,250. We can see here from the table, it's 1,318.75. So that's some quick ways to work out percentages of amounts without a calculator. It's a case of breaking it down into 10%, 1% and 0.1% etc by dividing your original number by 10 on each step. These next few questions focus on percentages of quantities so it'd be wise to pause here, have a go at the questions for yourself before you have a look at the solutions. In the first question we're being asked to work out 5% of 200. Now 5% and this is true for all percentages is an amount over 100. So it's 5 over 100. In this case, we're being asked to work out an amount out of 200. So what we could do is just extend the 100 by doubling it and say that if it's 5 over 100, we just double the amount. So the answer is equal to 5 multiplied by 2, which is 10. Another way we could do this involves multiplication of fractions. So what we could do is put 5% as 5 over 100. Of in this context means multiply, and any whole number can be expressed by itself over 1. When multiplying fractions, we can divide between top and bottom line. Here we're dividing by 10. And now we multiply across. 5 twos are 10, 1 times 1 is 1, and that gives us a result of 10. When working without a calculator, it's helpful to split up the percentage. So 23% is 23 over 100. But we can consider that as parts 10 over 100 and 1 over 100 can be used to build up to 23 over 100. So what is 10% or 10 over 100 of 540? Doing a calculation like this means we can divide through by 10 on the first fraction, divide through again on the top and bottom line, and we're left with 54. So 10% of 540 is 54. What about 1%? We can do the same division. We can divide through by 10. And dividing through by 10 again gives us 5.4. So that's 1% of 540. Now we can use these parts to determine 23%. 54 is 10%. Another 54 makes 20%. Then 5.4 is 21%. Another 5.4 is 22% and a final 5.4 makes up 23%. Adding up the right-hand column gives us 12, and then we carry the 1. 
The next column, 4 plus 4 is 8, 5 is 13, then 5 is 18, and 5 is 23, plus the 1 makes 24. So we put a 4, carry the 2. 5 and 5 is 10, plus the 2 makes 12. Make sure that you recall where the decimal point is and all the units are lined up correctly. So our final percentage is 124.2, and we achieve that by working out 10% and 1% of the amount and then putting the pieces together to get 23%. In this problem we're going to increase an amount by a certain percentage. So in other words we're going to add something on. So we need to work out 3% of 250 and we'll do this the same way as we did in the previous example. Let's work out 1% of 250. Now you can try this for yourself but an easy way to do it is to divide 250 by 100. So we'll take the decimal point in two places because we're dividing by 10 first and then another 10, so basically dividing by 100. And the answer is 2.5. So 3% is 2.5 multiplied by 3, or just adding 2.5 to itself and adding it again. When we do that and add those three amounts together, what we get is 7.5. Again, you can check that for yourself by doing the addition. So our result to increase 250 by 3% means to add 7.5 to 250. So our result is 257.5. Being able to work out 1% and 10% of amounts without a calculator is very helpful to solving these problems. It's recommended for these next three questions that you again pause, have a look at them for yourself and see if you can do the calculations, and then check the solutions that follow. In these questions we're being asked to work out percentages, as opposed to the percentages of an amount, and they're put in a word context. So the first one is easy because the units are the same, so we've got 50 centimetres out of 200. We'll convert it to an amount over 100, which we can see here is dividing 200 by 2. So if we do the same thing to the top line, we've got 50 divided by 2. 2 goes into itself once, into 5 twice with one remainder. And then 2 goes into 10 five times. So 50 divided by 2 is 25. So we've got a result of 25 over 100, which is 25%. In this next question we've got two quantities, one in seconds and another in minutes. So we'll leave 15 seconds as is, but we'll convert minutes into seconds. So there's 60 seconds in a minute. So this fraction is 15 out of 60, and we want it to be out of 100 so it's a percentage. Best way to do this is to simplify. 5 goes into 15 3 times, and into 60 12 times. So we're breaking the fraction down. That's 3 twelfths. Now we'll try another number. 3 goes into itself once, and into 12 four times. So we've got a fraction of 1 quarter, and our aim is to make that fraction into a percentage. It is very helpful to have a quick grasp of some basic fractions to percentages. 1 half is equal to 50%, and we can say that because 1 quarter of 100 equals 25, we can convert one quarter to 25%. Let's have a look at another way of doing this. Same again as before, we need the quantities in the same unit. So one minute is 60 seconds. So we've got 15 out of 60. Now 100% of 60 is 60 seconds. 50% is a half of that amount, so it's 30 seconds. And 25% is a half of that again and that comes to 15 seconds. So this is not really a calculation, more a case of trial and error and breaking down the amounts into halves and quarters because that equates to 50% and 25%. In this next question we'll convert fortnights to weeks, so one fortnight is two weeks, and we're working out two out of ten as a percentage. So one way to do that is to look at those numbers and say can we make it out of a hundred? 10 multiplied by 10 equals 100, so we need to do the same thing to the top line. 2 times 10 is 20, and that means we've got a result of 20%. 
There's a question coming up now involving maps and scales. So it suggests that you pause and have a good look at the map and see if you can work out the solution based on the information that's given. In this first question, we're being asked to work out the actual distance between the triangles. That's the line shown here matching a distance of 12 centimetres on the map. Now the map has a scale of 1 to 50,000. That means that the value of 12 needs to be multiplied by 50,000 so we get the actual distance. The actual distance is 50,000 times larger. Now 5 12s are 60, so we'll place that down first. And then we've got four extra zeros to place at the end of that number. So the result is 600,000, and that's in centimetres. So that is a correct answer. But let's how we look to convert that to something that's probably more realistic, in other words, mentioned in metres or kilometres. We'll use a conversion chart, so we'll write down centimetres, metres, kilometres. To go from kilometres to metres and metres to centimetres, we need to first of all multiply by 1,000, and then multiply by 100 for metres to centimetres. And going in reverse is the same numbers, but we need to do division. So divide by 100 for centimetres to metres, and divide by 1,000 for metres to kilometres. So this answer here of 600,000 centimetres can be converted first of all by dividing by 100, that means crossing off two zeros, that makes it into metres, and then dividing by 1,000, so crossing off three zeros. And that gives us a result of six kilometres as the distance that would actually occur between those two triangles shown on the map. Once again, it would be wise to pause here so you can have a look at the next question based on maps and scale before you have a look at the solution. So in this question, we've got a distance between the circles, which is actually 4.6 kilometres. We're trying to work out what it would be on the map. So 4.6 kilometres need to be reduced. And in fact, we're going to divide by 50,000 because it'll be much smaller on a piece of paper than what it actually is in the real world. So to make this calculation easy, we need to convert the units. So we'll put our chart up. We know kilometres to metres is multiplied by 1,000 and then metres to centimetres is multiplied by 100. So 4.6 kilometres, if we first of all multiply by 1,000, we can move that decimal point three places based on three zeros. So doing that, if we move it one place, we move the decimal point, and then two more places means we need to put some zeros in. So that's 4,600 metres still needs to be divided by 50,000 though because we haven't yet reduced it to be on a piece of paper. Now to multiply that by 100 will give us the amount in centimetres which is what actually occurs on the piece of paper. And that's putting two extra zeros down. So we get 460,000 centimetres and we need to divide that by 50,000. So that calculation is probably easier done using a fraction that way we can see all the zeros lined up. So we'll write them down as a fraction. That's 460,000 divided by 50,000. We can see we can quickly cancel the zeros, which is like dividing by 10. So we're left with 46 over 5. And this, of course, is in centimetres. So we'll see how many times 5 goes into 46. It doesn't go into 4, but it does go into 46 9 times remainder 1. So we've got a value after the decimal point. 5 goes into 10 twice. And that means that our answer is 9.2 centimetres. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and have a look at our YouTube channel and our website for different resources that will help you to get through your honour.